In this video, I want to reply to somebody named Christian Street Preacher, who's put out a number of videos on YouTube, and uh, his 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 modus operandi seems to be to uh, set up a straw man um, by selectively editing comments of people he argues with on the street, and then editing them uh, even further, and then um, in order to prove that he's right about Christianity. Well, my reply is, is based on the Christian faith. It's based on the theology of somebody named Reverend Andrew Lindsay, uh, who's written about 20 books on a theme called Christian Animal Rights. And essentially what, and, and what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that there's more than one way to interpret the Bible and there is a way that is uh, a quite a correct way, I believe, which is to to that it promotes animal rights and ethical veganism. Uh, Andrew Lindsay is not the only animal rights theologian, but he's probably the best known one. Uh, what he says, for example, is that animals are created by God, and it would be a sin to harm them and eat them, because we have a moral choice to do that or not. And we have a moral choice at this time in history that is especially important because eating animals uh, that come from factory farms causes global warming, and it causes in, it's the number one cause of water waste in the world. So if you're concerned about the world, about protecting creation, God's creation, then you won't eat animals. It's the single best thing you can do to protect creation. Because in Genesis, it says, basically, the, this interpretation of Genesis is that we are, have to be good stewards of the world, of the earth, and not to desecrate it and destroy it for our own purposes. Uh, Adam and Eve were given this, given this task, and uh, they failed. And the fall of man and, the, and sin are basically their failure to take care of the Garden of Eden. Uh, Lindsay says, um, there's a blessing in creation, and uh, we share it in this blessing, which is the um, our existence with the other animals of this earth. And we have a moral responsibility to them because of that. I like this verse, Matthew 25, 40. It says, inasmuch as you, uh, if you do this to the least of mine, you do it to me. If you harm an animal who is the, certainly the most least and most vulnerable creature on this earth, then you're harming God because God created the animals. If you are helping an animal, it's like you're helping God. Uh, there's an issue of social justice. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, one of the Jewish values is social justice. Um, and there's a covenant between God and community and God and the individual. And that covenant uh, needs to, to extend as well the community. We need to understand that the community is not just the community of other Jews. Obviously, the New Testament has opened that up. It's the community of creation of other animals as well. And we have a moral responsibility to our fellow humans and to other created beings um, in this way, to, to, to enter into a covenant with them and, uh, and to observe social justice, which means non-harm. Um, so animals like us are free, Lindsay says. They are to be with God and enjoy their life. Our liberation as children of God is to be found precisely at the point where we expect at least namely as fellow creatures in God's creation. This is the blessing of creation. The curse of creation relates to man's fall and and God's ambi now ambiguous relationship with creation in which he is disappointed. Um, and this is a this is an important issue that Lindsay, he, I mean, this is an entire theology that I think the Christian street preacher, preacher seems to have missed. The Christian, Christian street preacher talks about, he talks about um, plants and somehow tries to equate uh caring for animals with, with uh, not harming plants. That's a completely false argument because, because plants don't have complex emotions and thoughts and feelings like animals do. Do you think that a, a piece of broccoli has the same emotions as your dog? It's absurd. 
And if you care for a dog or a cat and you think it's wrong to harm them, why isn't it wrong to harm then a chicken or a cow? Why are, why do people feel that they have the license to harm those creatures who also have emotions and thoughts and feelings that God has endowed them with? Um, and we do have a moral choice in this matter. And that moral choice is actually um, something that we as rational beings um, need to really think about deeply. Do we, and uh, the Christian street, street preacher also talks about what's natural. Um, I'm not sure in the video if he says that, but he certainly says it in the comments on YouTube. It's human beings could say it's natural to own slaves. They could say it's natural to rape each other or murder each other. To say something is natural doesn't mean that it's right. So there's an issue of morality here that the Christian street preacher seems to be glossing over, maybe because he just likes to eat animals. But I would urge him, if he's listening to this, to think seriously about his moral responsibility as a Christian to protect, to uh, respect God's creation, to respect God's creatures, and to take it upon himself as a, as a sincere... Um, duty of, as a Christian, as somebody who believes in that, in, in God and in the Bible, to, to, um, to respect the obligation to, uh, to social justice that we're all called upon as human beings. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to, to understand that uh, this is true, but I think uh, Christian theology for Christians helps us to understand it further. It, it, it adds another layer of understanding um, that that we might not get uh, if um, if we're if we don't uh, we don't observe the Bible. Another issue I just want to bring up. It's a small point at the very beginning of the of the video. The Christian street preacher talks about Hindus and Buddhists being reincarnated as plants. There's nowhere in the Hindu or Buddhist cosmologies or theologies that they talk about being reincarnated in that way, as I recall. I study religion at the University of Toronto. I'm a PhD student here in religious studies. That's not, I think he's misrepresenting those religions. Um, it's interesting to see uh, sort of like a, a preacher go out and, and observe, and try to do the right thing by preaching what he believes in, but at the same time putting down other belief systems and misrepresenting them, I don't think that's really uh, the Christian thing to do. I think the Christian thing to do is listen and observe and enter into dialogue, meaningful dialogue with other points of view that have a, that expound a moral position. And moreover, it's a, it's a Christian duty in this case to in the context of global warming and factory farming, to actually try to understand um, Christian animal rights theology that has been thought through and worked through by some very brilliant minds, some Christian theologians, and to try to understand that and try to internalize it and come to terms with it and try to live a moral life based on those kinds of uh, profound teachings. Um, Another point that the preacher makes is that, uh, well, animals eat other animals. Well, Paul Figueres, who is in the video, um, talks about the fact that animals don't have, are not held to the same moral standards as we are. Lindsay says, animals are not to be held responsible for violence they inflict, but humans having free will are responsible for the mis their misdeeds because we alone are free to reject God. Thus, we must make a covenant with creation to live in harmony with animals. We must express humility, uh, Lindsay says. Our worth does not mean the unworth of creation. God exists through the creatures. Um, and as I noted before with Matthew twenty five forty, to harm them is like harming God because he created them, according to that theology. Um, so the Bible can be interpreted wrongly. That is to say, it can be interpreted to justify great harm and violence, and it has been throughout its whole history. Thus, we see in Christian history the misuse and misinterpretation of the Bible to justify great acts of evil. 
um, when you're saying that the Bible isn't can be interpreted to justify harm to animals, that's just yet another example of the gross misinterpretation of the Bible to justify great harm, when in fact it can, if it's properly understood, um, then it can be used to, under, to uh, enlarge our sense of compassion for other creatures and to live a more moral and more meaningful life in, in harmony with creation. That's what I had to share today. Thank you.